Welcome to EPG Patishala. I am Dr. C. Nagalakshmi, working as Assistant Professor, Department of Sociology, University of Hyderabad. Uh, this module comes under the paper Methodology of Research in Sociology. And the name of the module is Alternate Sources, Methods of Knowledge and Knowledge Production. In this module, we will familiarize with you the ideas of how to collect data in a dynamic research environment. In other words, sometimes in social research, researchers face such situations where it is very difficult to gather data. In such situations, it is important to be a little innovative and there are certain methods of data collection known as the alternative sources. These are also sometimes called as the unobtrusive methods using which you will be able to collect authentic data without losing academic rigor. Social scientists have to deal with the issue of objectivity and collect unbiased responses during data collection from the respondents as well as informants during a survey. It must be noted that the process of eliciting the data is also social in nature and this affects the interaction process. Knowledge is gained through the process of observation, examination or interrogation of the experiences, attitudes and beliefs of people. Who are, for the, uh, who are the subjects of research. They are defined as the sample population of a study who are either directly or indirectly asked to provide information to the researcher. Such a process of soliciting answers to specific questions raises many issues. Thus, in a survey, only some of the identified respondents would be willing to answer the questions non-response to specific questions is particularly seen in questionnaire based studies. The basic question that crops up in any survey research is how are the respondents going to benefit by sharing their time, energy and experience. As a corollary, even those who express their willingness to cooperate do not in reality take such an endeavor seriously and on many occasions the answers provided tend to be in line with the study objectives stated by the researcher and with an acceptable self-image. Respondents also tend to answer in line with the expectations of the researcher during the survey interaction process. This is especially the case with interviews during which the respondents answers may be influenced by the words using during the interaction and the framing of the questions and the meaning constructed. Often responses provided on items like literacy, income or expenditure match with social expectations. It is therefore argued that the technique of interview comes in between the interviewer and the interviewee. Respondents follow the sequence of the questions and sometimes adjust their answers and check their own consistency. Again, respondents could be reactive to the presence of the researcher and others. Therefore, there is a scope for receiving answers which are not so authentic and do not reflect their actual or real attitudes. This was proved during the well-known study conducted at the Western Electric and uh, known as the Hawthorne effect. A respondent is likely to be influenced by the physical presence of the researcher and is in itself an influencing factor shaping acceptable responses to the interview questions. To avoid this, the researcher has to be or become a part of the social group and it's a very long and time consuming activity to become a part of the studying group. To prevent such interference and to get rid of the influences of the attitudes, beliefs of the respondents affecting the survey, there is a need for innovative approaches to elicit data. Observation of social phenomena can be the best method for social research, but its scope is limited. Obtaining and examining the physical evidence such as written documents, voice recordings and narratives, secondary sources for data collection are explained in the previous modules of this program. Another factor apart from respondent activity that affects knowledge building in social research is the research environment itself. It is dynamic and sometimes presents challenging tasks to the researcher while collecting data. There have been several complex transformations within the society as well as within the social science disciplines to understand these phenomena. These transformations in the questions that are framed to study the social phenomena and the methods required to answer them have destabilized the traditional modes of thinking and knowledge building as well as the sources of knowledge. 
A new set of methods had to be adopted by social scientists to build knowledge on these complex interrelationships and phenomena. These new modes of knowledge building endeavors by social scientists have paved the way to understand in depth the interconnections between several phenomena like race, nation and gender. The orientation also has been that of accommodating newer methods, cross-disciplinarity and thus offering much flexibility in methods yet retaining the much desired theoretical rigor. These methods have been labeled and explained as unobtrusive methods. These newer research methods other than the traditional or the old methods are more adaptable to situations while eliciting information when it is difficult or challenging and sometimes it is also dangerous for the researcher to remain physically present at the research site. In all such cases the unobtrusive methods are useful and as a corollary such approach promotes innovative methodologies. The need for these methods also arises out of the fact that there has been a decline in the response to surveys in general. There is also some tendency of researchers to develop over-reliance on the volunteering respondents and to their responses. It is possible to use multiple methods during data collection and include some unobtrusive methods in combination with the survey research methods. Thus, the use of unobtrusive methods is actually complementary to the traditional or the uh, usually um, you know, established methods such as survey and one can avoid over-reliance on a given method including biases and reactivity and especially in sensitive or adverse situations in the research field or environment as against such qualitative uh, methods such as ethnography which are time consuming and require constant presence of a researcher which again can alter the respondents disposition these unobtrusive methods have some benefits these are easier access to data Permission from subjects is not always necessary. They are relatively inexpensive. They are appropriate for longitudinal studies that follow activities or processes over a period of time. They are non-reactive, meaning subjects or respondents are not interrupted. Their time is not taken up and they are not prompted to disclose sensitive or potentially distressing information. They are safe in comparison to other methods due to the degree of distance or in some cases complete anonymity of the researcher. They also uh, offer a sufficient amount of distance from the subject or respondent and thus the researcher can maintain relative objectivity. These uh, unobtrusive methods are appropriate for use when a research topic is of a sensitive nature or one uh, which is very personally close to the researcher. There are however some precautions that a researcher should take note of while using these methods. First, there is a potential for unconscious or selective recording of observational data due to the identity and social positioning of the researcher. A thorough evaluation of uh, all the sources and findings for authenticity is also necessary. The credibility, representativeness and meaning must be ascertained by the researcher in the study while reporting. The researcher therefore should use uh, his or her discretion to select a research setting but interesting insights can be gained without disturbing or influencing people and uh, by observing with care and listening systematically. So the repertoire of unobtrusive methods includes the following sources. Uh, written and audiovisual records, material culture which includes physical objects, settings and traces, some simple observations and some of the techniques for recording or uh, capturing of data including camera and videos etc. One of the ways of classifying these methods were offered by um, Lee in the year 2000 and they are found data which includes erosion and accretion, captured data which includes videos and still photography and visual sociology, third is the retrieved data which is further divided into running records, personal and episodic records and the fourth source is the internet. And the first um, way of classifying uh, data that can be collected through the unobtrusive methods which is found data. Found data are nothing but the traces of the phenomena under study. The use of resources by population under study can be an indication of a particular phenomenon. This occurs as erosion which is the frequent use of resources in terms of wear and tear and accretion 
which is the frequent addition to or what keeps adding up. Erosion. The levels of consumption or too much consumption of any resource or material objects leave certain traces. This aspect of research is similar to an investigation. Some examples of social aspects of erosion and uh, socially relevant indicators of a phenomenon are accumulation and use of circulatory devices such as stamps, tickets and pamphlets, the staining and wearing down of floor tiles in a particular area of a building are indicative of the social preferences of a population. For example, in a gym, the popularity of a particular gym apparatus can be indicated by the amount of chalk consumed and can be associated with the self-image and acceptability in a peer group of the people using it. The popularity of books can be gauged by the crumples, smudges and finger marks etc. on the book. This indicates the popularity of the book of course. They also indicate the phenomena, aspects or themes which are of interest to people and the reasons for the same. Pamphlets, brochures and leaflets published in different languages and on several issues that are used and thrown or retained by a population can be observed. Mementos and pictures on postcards purchased and the popularity linked with such social preference, affinity due to any social cause also can be observed. Cultural changes can be observed by the use of land for burials in rural and urban settings, the sizes, shapes and designs of the graves, the cultural trends in the epitaphs have changed from uh, uh, complex to simple forms or sometimes into simple forms from complexity and the designs sculpted on these are indicative of the social differentiation and status. The second is accretion. Accretion is the opposite of erosion and is indicative of accumulation of evidence of social activity and some residues. The best example of this is the graffiti which is writings on public spaces. These writings indicate the existence of conflicts in social groups and can be observed in some specific locations. These are indicative of the tensions in society, relationships in institutions such as schools. The content is indicative of social composition, uh, social occupations and the conflicts within these relationships. The quality of content indicates the level of conflict with abusive and symbolic representations indicating the seriousness of the issue. One can even observe the garbage discarded. This is actually termed as garbology and can indicate consumption accumulation of material specific to the preferences of the society under study. For example, one can trace habits of alcoholism by noticing the presence of such bottles and even the type and quality of such alcohol bottles in the garbage of a neighborhood. The advantages of these methods are that they are abundant, pervasive, low cost, quantifiable and allow researchers anonymity. However, there are some disadvantages of found data as these are um, very socially dependent and they take time to accumulate. And sometimes uh, they are weak evidence for in inference as they give only conservative estimates for the concerned variables. The next uh, aspect is the captured data. Captured data indicates a method of data collection which relies on what is observed as discreetly as possible in a field including the exterior physical signs such as hair on head, face, tattooing, clothing, adornments, the expressive movements such as the demeanor, eye gaze, the physical proximity and verbal latency. The maintenance of uh, proximity and spatial arrangement of people and their physical arrangements in sittings, uh, different settings, the in situ conversation and pronunciation and time related behavior. Uh, what is the time or part of the day is influencing a particular behavior also can be observed under captured data. It is necessary that the role of the observer has to be passive and sampling should be done with care. There are many variations in the recording techniques for captured data. One is to create descriptive records with a clear depiction of the settings and situations with complete details without evaluating it. This can be done through written notes or recorded content. A check sheet also can be used in a simple format for observations with a little prior preparation. Using a grid, the time of observation and what is observed and recorded on the check sheet can be maintained.
for complex and large volume of data computers can be used. The first method is using videos and still photography. Videos and still photography constitute the, uh, one of the main aspects of unobtrusive data collection. To observe processes in public spaces, thoroughfares, time lapse videos and filming can be very useful. These methods provide data captured in detail and can be retrieved at any point of time. Photography is one of the more important techniques that has been used by cultural anthropologists and sociologists to document the cultural processes and artifacts of the people who are studied. Social change can be observed with photographic documentaries through, uh, through the creation of a repository of data uh, through systematic collection and analysis. A shooting script is created with questions on what is to be photographed. Photographs are taken as responses to the questions listed and a descriptive narrative is then written around these visuals. Digital photography can provide a detailed narrative through several images of social situations and creation of digital image databases. Most of human behavior within a time and space and social meanings are amenable to simple observation and that is the basis on which captured data can be collected in a given research setting. However, there are some ethical considerations of capturing such data. Thus, when the researcher starts recording data, it could lead to reactivity among the respondents due to photo sessions. This could affect validity and the reliability of data. It must also be noted that such observation offers content that is limited based only on the visibility and requires access to other more potentially reactive forms of data. The second aspect is visual sociology. A new sociology using visual methods called visual soci sociology is emerging and for more details on the content of, you, of this module, refer to the module number 29. This is an area of sociology concerned with the visual dimensions of social life. Visual sociology theoretically at least includes the study of all kinds of visual material and the visual social world. It uses all, uh, most of the visual material available in its methodologies. There are at least three approaches to doing visual sociology. Data collection using cameras and other recording technology. A sociologist can use film and video cameras as data gathering techniques for data and even experiments. This is a good tool to study small group interactions, classroom studies, ethnography and participant observation, also uh, oral history and the use of urban space etc. Studying visual data produced by cultures society produces various images as part of its culture and this can be studied sociologically. Communication with images and media other than words is another way of visual sociology's contribution and this is uh, through the use of visual media in order to communicate sociological understandings to professional and public audiences. One can also use visual media within sociological research itself in this way. The third way of collecting unobtrusive uh, data is through retrieved data. This includes running records. Data can be collected unobtrusively through repositories of records created by several institutions, including bureaucracy, such as population records, actual records of births, deaths, and marriages, and such. These can be classified into running records versus episodic and private records. Examples of running records include news archives and other mass media, reference works, records of proceedings in the public domain. These records also include factual material and cover lengthy periods of time. These sources are ubiquitous and do not cost much. They are less amenable to self-report and low on bias. The records that are provided by the bureaucracies actually allow the exploration of trends and temporal patterns. Apart from the bureaucratic sources for data, mass media including the news stories, advertisements, photographs, obituaries, wedding announcements and other sources that can offer running records for longitudinal and temporal analysis. There are also internet based repositories of news and analysis available as archives. Others include reference works such as directories, almanacs, yearbooks, 
retrieved from the records of proceedings, documentation of discussions and decisions in institutions and formal organizations also can be used as running records. Advertisings can also act as retrieved data as they indicate the social perceptions, relationships, health problems specific to that time period. Wedding cards and marriage announcements and obituaries also indicate the influence of religion and the class versus church or a religious denomination, etc. They also show the association between gender and occupation and um, the length of the obituary can indicate the social status. Other sources include job advertisements, book lists and phone books, etc. It should however be acknowledged that retrieved data also come with certain limitations. When bureaucratic data is being used along with any other forms of data for a longitudinal analysis and record a linkage, there could be some discontinuity. Hence one should be vigilant and observe some restrictions in matching such data with other data sources. They cannot be used on an as-is basis and one should consult with, with those who are collecting and producing them to know the intricacies and the context of the data from where it is collected. There could be some quality issues and questions on the quality of data, especially when data is more extensive. Statistics generated out of the data might also affect the aims and objectives of the organization or those who are collecting and analyzing such data. Confidentiality and restrictions in usage of these sources also create certain limitations. The next way of collecting these data is through personal and episodic records. Sources of data can provide good narratives of social life in many different times. They are in a way self-reports. Best example is personal documents such as letters, diaries, daily journals, autobiographies, curriculum vitae's. Uh, the wills that are written for property and photo albums. The way uh, families arrange their photographs in their albums or weddings, the, the way people are uh, presented in the photograph and uh, the importance given to the family members in these uh, photographs, birthday celebrations also provide some useful insights about social relationships. So this is visible clearly in the way you know, the, the photographs are positioned. Written documents and the language used in them is another important source of understanding relationships within families and then in society, especially with the property wills, etc. The fourth source of unobtrusive data is the internet. Internet actually transforms the ways in which society shares information about itself and among the members of different groups of society. There are ways in which internet is used by members of a society the type of information that is shared, the way uh, people maintain their networks, the frequency and in intensity of such communication, the content of the communication are important aspects in this. Interestingly, the popularity of a website or a statement made in the pages of Facebook can be measured by the number of likes and dislikes and reactions. Very often such networking relies more on reciprocity and mutual interests than on the quality of the friendship. These and many more are amenable for study without the issue of reactivity of the respondents which occurs in direct research through survey or interview. Computer and information technologies provide sources and tools for storage of these data and in a wide range of formats. Data stored in the internet such as images, videos, archives of documents, news, as discussed in the previous section, on personal web pages, social networks and the like offer a wealth of information for social research. Most importantly, internet is a very good unobtrusive source and method as one can access information in discrete manner unless investigated in depth by experts to know who accessed information and when on the world wide web. Internet and online based unobtrusive measures provide access to plenty of secondary sources with options to search through search engines like Google or Internet Explorer. The information required is first sourced and later can be used for analysis of its content. Another way is the use of the medium for communication. Thus, like the telephone, email can be used for dispersing questionnaires. 
It is worth noting here that as a direct tool, internet has made it possible for researchers to know about the online users cutting across social and geographical boundaries. Interestingly, while carrying out research in this way, the researcher also can keep his or her as well as the respondent's identity anonymous. This is by choice. This form of research can be termed as computer-mediated communication, which compels social scientists to carefully consider about ethical issues such as informed consent, maintenance of confidentiality, and anonymity of the respondents while using this medium for research, especially via emails, etc. Technological advances have complemented the methodological advances and innovative methods using new technologies are now gaining acceptance in social science research. It may be mentioned here that with increasing use of electronic technology and mobile phones, telephonic interviews and SMS surveys have also become possible these days. Innovative and critical approaches in social science research are emerging without challenging or compromising the academic standards as they allow exciting new interpretations and findings from social phenomena. It may be observed that the new trend is not just combining qualitative and quantitative methods, this also accepts and recognizes methodological diversity. Researchers from various disciplines, institutes and research centers are increasingly getting connected through the world wide net. This is leading to the emergence of multidimensional lenses to view or investigate the social world and posing new questions that cannot necessarily be answered using the older traditional research techniques. It is not just about increasing the number of methods and tools to measure, but about innovative methods emerging to access aspects of social reality, for interpretive and critical understanding. Though these newer sources are challenged and are treading uncharted ground, the originality and innovative approach to sensitive issues and questions provide a strong support for their use. If traditional, normal, qualitative, quantitative methods are used along with these newer methods in a complementary manner, researchers can actually tackle issues of limitations of resources and sensitivity of the respondents, especially in dynamic and volatile research environments. We may therefore conclude that the newer and alternate methods of data collection promote scholarly conversations and contributions through knowledge building and research with newer questions. Emergent and unobtrusive methods call for a re-evaluation of conventional standards and interdisciplinary approaches. These methods not only are appropriate for particular research projects with sensitive issues, but also for the larger project of knowledge building in the discipline. So by now, you would have been familiarized with how a, a researcher can use found data, captured data, and retrieved data as alternative sources for uh, knowledge and knowledge production. The key issue in this module is the concern uh, which has to be addressed also is that the researcher should take care of validity and the researcher should also observe extreme diligence because these are methods which are more suitable as complementary to the uh, usually uh, used methods such as survey and interviews. So it's important to know that these are also alternate sources because uh, when, the, when the researcher is actually in a dynamic research environment and, and the research environment itself is very sensitive, one cannot go about uh, asking questions as a survey, as an interview. And that time, one can use captured data as uh, photographs or still photographs and videos. One can also use uh, running records such as personal diaries, letters and such. These also may overlap with some of the historical methods like oral histories and uh, other written records. However, the point to be noted is that these are complementary to the usually used um, research methods in sociology such as surveys, interviews and others.